Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I have another perfume related topic today. Um, this one I think is really interesting. Um, it was a little rabbit hole that I went down a couple of weeks ago and took some notes and I, I'm finally going to film this video today. So we'll we'll get to it here in a second but I did just want to take just a brief moment to thank you guys for humoring me in terms of um being open to and embracing this new like type of video that I'm really enjoying doing I really like this perfume review series that I'm doing it just I've watched perfume reviews here on YouTube for years and have always found them so incredibly helpful. In fact, I found several fragrances that I absolutely love and that I would consider like a core part of my like perfume collection now just because I saw these fragrances mentioned in a review and it kind of sucked me in and then I ended up trying the fragrance and it worked well with my body chemistry and now I have a new holy grail fragrance all because someone decided to upload their thoughts on a perfume here on this platform so that's basically my intention it's just kind of sharing my experience with these different fragrances that I purchased that I try that I fall in love with some of them I don't fall in love with and they're just kind of a one and done but I'm finding a lot of really great fragrances that I think are just really great to be able to share with you guys and if you happen to find maybe a new like personal like statement type fragrance um just because of seeing it in a video like I don't know that just that thought of that makes me happy because I have found so many myself just based off of other people's suggestions so I don't know I just always thought of YouTube as a really great platform to come to for advice suggestions um things to uh research further things to you know look into rabbit holes to go down if you will and um yeah i just i appreciate you guys humoring me in this journey as i kind of you know start to go down this path myself um who knows i mean i might just get bored with this four months from now and we never talk about another perfume again but that's just kind of what my channel is i literally just kind of tend to upload whatever floats my boat at the time so thank you guys for going down these different rabbit holes with me and yeah let's just let's talk about something uh kind of funny today um so several weeks ago i came across an article and i'll try to remember to link it down below in the comments but it was an article about strange perfume ingredients so that's what we're talking about today is i found several really kind of weird <laughs> what i would think of as bizarre like ingredients in perfumes and here's the thing a lot of the these things that i'm going to be mentioning um now have a synthetic version of that original kind of maybe somewhat weird perfume ingredient so um, you know it might be that your perfume contains a synthetic of this specific type of scent that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today and there are some weird things that people have used in the history of perfume to come up with very unique um, beautiful fragrances but maybe you wouldn't think they were so beautiful if you knew like the origins <laughs> of these ingredients so that's what we're doing today we're talking weird perfume ingredients now again there might be synthetics for all of these things at this point in fact i know that like a couple um at least one of these it is uh, and it's the first one that i'm talking about um you you you're not supposed to actually collect this stuff from the ocean because uh sperm whales are a protected species so what are we talking about we're going to talk about the first ingredient here ambergris um i have mentioned before where ambergris comes from but i always feel like it's worth reiterating because it's one of those like what <laughs> really again i think i believe there are synthetics that mimic this type of um fragrance note at this point so uh you know i don't think you're spraying uh whale 
excrement on you. It's not even excrement. What, what is it? Okay, let's let's talk about what it is. Ambergris is um, it is a waxy substance that is found in the digestive tract of specifically sperm whales, and um, I I think that the sperm whales can either vomit it up, but I think most frequently it is uh, it's pooped out. It's so the sperm whale will poop out the ambergris, and um, the consistency of it causes it to float. And so it just kind of, I don't think it ferments. Uh, it, just, it just ages as it floats along on the sea. And um, in the past, people have collected ambergris and used it as a pretty prominent ingredient in a lot of different perfumes. What does it smell like? In its raw form, it smells <laughs> sweet and oceanic, ironically <laughs> enough. Um, also, they did give some examples of a few perfumes that have some of these different ingredients in them. So an example of ambergris uh, can be found in Terry Mugler's, uh, why do I have trouble saying? Mugler, Terry Mugler, there we go. Um, the Alien Eau Extraordinaire that has ambergris in it. Now, I don't know if it's actually artificial ambergris, like a synthetic ambergris, or if it's the real thing. I am not sure if the real thing is used at all, but I do know that I'm pretty sure it's illegal to even collect ambergris at this point. Because again, sperm whales are a protected marine life. So as they should be, I feel like I'd probably rather have the synthetic myself. <laughs> but ambergris, there you go. That is the origin. And um, yeah, it's used in, in a Terry Mugler perfume. So if you wear that, enjoy. <laughs> All right, here's another one. Castorium. What is castorium from? Well, it is the secretions from the anal glands of beavers. Um, and it smells leathery and vanilla. Um, there was an example given, but it was this really like obscure perfume that I've never even heard of. And it was a French name and I wasn't even going to try to pronounce it. So, but anyway, you could have, if you have a perfume that has those leathery vanilla type notes, could potentially contain castorium. Again, I think in all likelihood, most of these now contain the synthetic version of these fragrances, but that's, that's where she was originally from, the anal glands of a beaver. All right, caviar. Okay, so caviar is on top of being a treat for the fancy people of the world. Um, it is also used in perfume creation. So um, it is harvested typically from the fish eggs of sturgeon and it is used as a fragrance enhancer. And supposedly it has a both sweet and savory fragrance to it. And here we have another Terry Mugler uh, suggestion if you are interested in experience, in, in experiencing caviar in a fragrance. Terry Mugler's um, Womanity, I, th I think it's called Womanity, um, contains uh, caviar. So there you go. If you're interested, check out, just, uh, just check out all the Terry Mugler fragrances. <laughs> Apparently they have some interesting ingredients. All right, civet musk. Where do we think that civet musk comes from? Well, the, the civet, which is like, it's kind of like a type of cat, but it lives in the jungle, right? It's a wild animal. Um, and it is, of course, a, it's from the anal secretions of the city cat. What I want to know is who was the first person to be like, you know what, I'm working on this new perfume and what I really need are the anal sec secretions of a civet because I came across that at one point and it just like sparked something in me and made me think, yes, this, this is what I need to collect to create my personal fragrance. Um, yeah, I just want to know how... I just, like the first time that that happened, like I just wonder, I just wonder, you know? Um, anyway, apparently uh, the civet musk smells floral and musky when it is diluted in alcohol. So <laughs> keep that in mind, always dilute your civet musk. All right, 
This one wasn't quite as bizarre, but interesting to me, gunpowder. So gunpowder smells kind of sulfury. Um, it smells a little bit like charcoal um, and potassium nitrate. And um, it smells peppery and smoky. And uh, if you like Victor and Rolf flower bomb nectar, they actually use um, the synthetic gunpowder smell in there to create that like smoky peppery note that you find in that particular fragrance. So that one was kind of interesting. Here's another fun one. We're going back to the animals, guys. Uh, labdanum. Okay. <laughs> this one I was like, who, again, who did this the first time and was like, I know what I'm going to use this for. Uh, so labdanum is actually combed from the thighs of goats that touched the rock rose shrub. So these uh, goats, you know, they're just out in the wild and they're rubbing up against the rock rose shrub. I actually have rock rose in my front yard. Um, and then that kind of, I guess, mixes with the hair and I guess the goat secretions and forms something that smells ambery and leather, leathery. And if you were blue by Chanel, um, it has labdanum in it. So yeah, combed from the thighs of goats that touched rock rose shrubs. That's what's in my notes. I'm pretty sure that's what I read on the internet. So fascinating, right? Labdanum. All right. Uh, I might mess this one up. <laughs> okay. Scatol, scattle, scattle or scatol. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, this is a foul smelling chemical compound uh, that can be found in both feces and tar. Again, I just, I'd love to know the first time. Um, it, this smells floral and natural um, when added to floral fragrances. So it just kind of enhances the, um, the notes of different flowers. So there you go. Um, also, let's, let's not only talk about the animal secretions, let's talk about human secretions because these are also used in some perfumes. Um, and I have an example here. I, again, this is a French brand, so you'll have to bear with me when I pronounce the name of it. Okay, human secretions. What has been used throughout history? Um, well, blood, sweat, spit, and urine have all been used in creating personal fragrances, which, yeah. I just, again, I think, <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't judge, I shouldn't judge because you know what, people are resourceful <laughs> and I should really admire people's resourcefulness and their ability to think outside of the box. That's what I'm really admiring here is the ability to think outside of the box and just use some really random shit from nature and um, think, uh, you know what, I'm gonna make perfume out of this. Okay, what, what do these secretions smell like? Um, well, usually animalistic and musky, so there you go. Um, the, bear with me, again, this is French. I took one year of French my freshman year of high school and clearly it didn't stick. Et, etat libre d'orange secretion magnifiques so that's the name of the perfume if you are looking for uh, a perfume that create that that i guess utilizes hopefully the synthetics of human secretions um you can you can find them in that fragrance so there were several more um bacon cannabis popcorn <laughs> like these are all also in the article i will again link the article down below definitely an interesting read but yeah I, humans are so creative and um, really have taken some stuff that you would think is just not even remotely usable for like anything useful and they have turned these things into some of the most popular fragrances on the market. I mean, I, I know so many friends who wear Terry Mugler fragrances and I cannot wait to share my knowledge about <laughs> about the ingredients in their perfumes with them. I can't wait. 
I'm sure they're gonna be like, thanks for researching that, homie. Um, I appreciate it. Anyway, you guys, um, please let me know which of these you thought was the most bizarre or the weirdest. Um, also, if you have a fragrance that you absolutely love that contains a fragrance note or an oil that is just kind of strange or bizarre, let us know down below. Um, I, I do believe I have some fragrances in my collection that contain ambergris. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that I do. I'm not sure about these other ones per se. Um, I have smelled candles that have had labdanum in them and um, yeah, didn't really know at the time that it was combed from the thighs of goats that touched them. They specifically have to touch the rock rose shrub because you're not just gonna like comb some random goat that hasn't, you know, been amongst the shrubs, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, something a little different. There will be an in-depth perfume review coming at some point this week. I'm not sure which one it's gonna be because I just haven't thought that far ahead. So, but anyway, um, if you have any requests, let me know. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Toodaloo.